What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is December 17th of 2020. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are. In today's update, I want to take a moment to pause and reflect for a moment. I don't think I'm going to be the one breaking the news to all of you today, but we've officially broken over $20,000 for Bitcoin. And we haven't just broken above $20,000. We rallied towards a relative high of $23,777, roughly around that range on most exchanges. And we're sitting right now at $22,700. This is the moment we've been waiting for, guys. For those of you who bought at the highs of December of 2017. For those of you like myself who got in early in the previous bull market, or those of you who got in any period of time during the bear market or the early bull market this year, this is our moment to share together. And I'm so happy to be here with you all. I mean, it's a true blessing to have followed this crazy, radical new space of finance. There's just nothing like this going on in traditional markets. There's no market that's outpacing Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as a whole. It's an absolutely unique asset class. And all that stuff that we probably felt a bit crazy about championing that Bitcoin would be this new alternative hedge, similar to gold in some aspects, but also outpacing gold due to its unique traits. How it could be this non-correlated assets for all types of different parts of the financial system to protect themselves. We're witnessing the beginning phases of this. And I want to make something very clear because I know it's the case right now. There are a lot of people out there who are just getting involved for the first time. And there's two tweets that I would like to share with you in this case. First, above all, as I mentioned again, above all, congratulations, everyone, for seeing this breakthrough. But I want to emphasize something that I just tweeted out this morning. I think it's so true. For those of you who are just buying Bitcoin for the first time, or possibly considering buying Bitcoin, you feel like you got too late to the game here, I want to emphasize something very important. And this also goes for those who may own positions and are thinking about selling their positions. After hearing about Bitcoin since as far back as November 2011, I saw Bitcoin. The first time I ever saw a Bitcoin chart was coming from a price feed through Bitstamp which is one of the longest standing crypto exchanges by far. Back in November 11, I saw Bitcoin at $3. I completely ignored it at the time. I felt extremely late to the game when I eventually was building a position in Bitcoin, later a little bit above $1,100 in 2017, sometime after we had broken past the all-time highs. I felt like I had missed out on the train, that I had missed out on all the fun, Well, I was completely wrong. I was far away from being late to Bitcoin. After that, Bitcoin pulled, from my point where I bought it, a little bit less than a 20x in price. And now, in this case, if I was to just hold that Bitcoin to this day, I would be up 20x. Luckily, through altcoins and trading the market properly, I've done even better than that. But I'm not the only one. I'm not here to brag or anything like that. I'm not here to showcase, ah, I got in earlier than others. What I'm here to say is that there are many people like myself who are in your footsteps right now. Thinking about whether or not this is too late, that Bitcoin has gotten too big. And the reason why it's not too late is because this moment over the last 24 hours where we really broke out well above the all-time highs we broke past 20k and we've now gone up towards a new all-time high of 23,700 something dollars it basically says something very clear that this high no longer lasts that that was no longer a bubble it was a bump in the road and that bitcoin has got a lot more room to grow as well as the broader cryptocurrency space as a whole whether you like altcoins or not every bit of crypto is going to be benefiting from this move. And it's very exciting to see. Now, again, just taking a look at the broad market here, I want to talk first about, you know, 
the status of the market. Again, we're seeing some of the large altcoin plays, no surprise. So we talk about the large caps tend to benefit alongside Bitcoin. In this case, they're benefiting greater, up 25% for XRP. Litecoin, up nearly over 23%. In this case, Stellar as well, Theta, Bitcoin Cash, Uni, Ethereum, some of the large cap cryptos, all doing phenomenally well. And the, the broader list as well as green, but the vast majority of cryptos aren't keeping up with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's definitely in the market here. DeFi as well, getting a nice kick up here if we do the top gainers for the 24 hours. Good green list here. Now, I want to go ahead and talk about this news here. What's really driving this, guys? If we take a step back all the way to May of 2020, and even beyond that when we started talking about the halving event, the key thing that we drove in is that the halving event uh, was probably going to get brushed off as a non-event. A lot of people were expecting something to happen right away after the halving event went live, and we really didn't see much. And a lot of people were saying, oh, this is actually not, this wasn't this supposed to bring Bitcoin's price to, you know, 15, 20K immediately? due to the supply shock going into effect. And we told people, no, it's, it's not the case. It's going to be probably much more of a non-event. It's not going to move up too much. I mean, we were curious to see what would happen and stuff. Who knows that we could have been wrong. But the major thing overall is I was, was quite confident that we weren't going to see anything big because it's one thing to have a predetermined supply shock in this case. The market, uh, if anything, uh, you know, even if they're not pricing it in, the real reflection of it, you know, whether your price, you know, people, you think people know about the having event or don't, it doesn't matter because the effects of the supply set economics don't really start affecting it until it's multiple weeks and months and over a year in. And the other important thing to keep in mind as well is that even if you have that supply shock to really get dynamic, massive movement in price, you need the other portion of the equation to grow. As supply is going down, we need demand to go up. And that's exactly what we've been seeing over the last few months. It's the reason Bitcoin has, in just a couple of months, mind you, in the last couple of months, since back here in October, we have more than doubled in price, right? Coming back here since late September, early October. Why is it that during this period of time, we've seen such a resurgence in price? the vast majority of our price gains here since we bought them back here in March of 2020. The reason is, is because we've got massive institutions making multi-hundred million dollar orders that they're trying to get filled. And there's not enough Bitcoin whales to sell. All these, you know, all these fears that, oh, the Bitcoin whales are, oh, they're going to dump on the market. Remember, remember how we used to worry about like the short-term moves? You know, in the market, how whales could be able to push Bitcoin's price uh, down 15% or up 15%. They can't do that anymore. They really can't. Uh, there, there's not that much sell side pressure in these kind of short term moves. Most of what's going on here is major institutional firms like Ruffer out of the UK coming in and buying up $744 million, taking out a more than 2.5% allocation of their entire portfolio into Bitcoin. Now, if you guys want to understand why they're doing this, right, this is the quote here, okay? Now, I want to go ahead and give you a moment here. Again, I'm always about you guys thinking for yourselves and trying to pick up on this. So this is the quote here, the major quote of why they decided to buy Bitcoin. We see this as a small but potent insurance policy against the continuing devaluation of the world's major currencies. So think about it here for a second here. What is Ruffer doing in this case that's similar to MicroStrategy, similar to Mass Mutual, similar to a lot of companies that have been buying Bitcoin? What they're doing is what's known as treasury management. It's where companies during times of massive printing of cash who have a ton of cash on their balance sheet are realizing the basic reality that that cash is going to be probably worth less it's much more overwhelmingly likely that it's going to be worth less and that they have to put it somewhere into an asset or some type of different financial product that's growing to hedge against that inflation, that has growth potential. And that's exactly why companies like Ruffer, major investment firms, multi-billion dollar uh, investment firms, are going out and buying up Bitcoin. And they're all competing for it. 
Now, another thing as well, too, we've got this other story as well that came out yesterday. Uh, we've also got a, a fund in this case backed by Alan Howard, which is a massive hedge fund manager in the traditional financial space. He's got a net worth over a billion dollars personally. Basically, coming in buying more than $600 million in cryptocurrencies, and uh, in this case, the actual individual is a, a specific hedge fund manager being backed by Alan Howard. And they're going through, they've already bought $600 million of Bitcoin and Ethereum, and they're looking to bump it all the way up by early 2021 to a billion dollars in positions. So again, another $400 million of price action or buy side pressure that we haven't even seen yet. But $600 million, $600 million coming through. Now, I want to go ahead and make a very critical point here is this is obviously some very big news. And the last thing that I, you know, I haven't brought up here actually as well is that uh, we've also got ETH futures contracts coming very soon. It was just announced the other day. So all these things here are really great signs of the changing tide here. And you're going to find more and more of these stories as we've now broken up above the all time highs of 20K. But the critical thing to understand is that all this stuff, everything here, has been in the works for much longer than most people think. In all the years where you saw these major bankers, hedge fund managers, uh, you know, pension fund managers, whatever it may be, right? Traditional wings of the financial sector, corporate companies, all of them have been relatively negative on Bitcoin. And I'd say that the vast majority still don't get it. The vast majority still don't own positions. But the ratio from what we hear people saying how they feel versus what they're actually doing couldn't be more distinct because there are a lot of companies, there are a lot of institutional firms, there are a lot of personalities in the world of traditional finance who know what's going on with Bitcoin. They're not missing out on this. The problem they're dealing with is making sure that not enough people figure out about Bitcoin early enough so they can build sizable positions. It's not like you or I where we can probably go on Coinbase and buy a couple hundred bucks and maybe even $1,000 to $5,000 worth of Bitcoin, maybe a whole Bitcoin, right? It's not hard to fill on spot exchanges. But when you're talking about a $500 million order for your fund or for your personal you know, assets, whatever it may be, you can't fill that so quickly because that supply is drying up. And it doesn't matter if you're looking at OTC markets. It doesn't matter if you're looking at buying on spot exchanges. You're going to incur crazy slippage if you try to place that order. So there's really no simple way for these institutions to get in. They're having a sense of realistic FOMO. And quite frankly, I don't blame them. I don't think it's irrational. Because when Bitcoin makes these kind of moves, usually when you test all-time highs, like the last time, we would have maybe gone up a little bit above it, dipped down, sold off. This time is extremely different. The pressure here is big. And what I think we're going to see in this cycle, one thing that we've talked about in the newsletter a bit, um, you know, above all, uh, we've really focused on the fact that we're not going to spend too much time probably consolidating around this range here. What's likely to happen is to realize the fact and limitation that when we're continuing to grow in this market, whether we're going to 100K or 200K, we've got a very long journey to go. Now, this is the logarithmic chart, right? So again, let's just do like a, a standard chart here, right? This is not exactly what I think is going to happen, but right, we're bouncing around going towards our range here of 2021. Now, this is like the overwhelmingly optimistic case scenario if we wanted to go to like 200K, right? Let's go ahead, put on the auto chart here, take off log. That's a very large move that we're gonna need for Bitcoin to achieve by even our delayed target. Most people think it's 2021 when we're gonna set those all time highs, right? So in this case, somewhere in this ballpark range of price, and we'd have to move like this. That's a lot to ask for because in order to reach those kind of moves, you're going to need massive amounts of liquidity. Luckily, this time around, we've got massive amounts of liquidity. We got people buying in by a long shot. And if we get a catalyst like an announcement of a Bitcoin ETF that people could put in their pension funds, that's the catalyst you need to get there.
But right now we've got the corporate treasurers. We've got, you know, in this case, uh, you know, people managing the balance sheets of companies going through buying up Bitcoin. We've got hedge funds. We've got a lot of sectors of finance who are starting to show up to the street to buy Bitcoin. Now, a lot of people have asked me as well. I, I do want to apologize to you guys. I meant to get my altcoin video out yesterday. Um, I've been a bit busy with things in relation to work. I wanted to also as well touch up on the altcoin video, make it really special, make sure I mention all the critical points. And along with that as well, uh, make sure it comes out at a good time. Right now, Bitcoin is definitely the focus point for a lot of people. So I wanted to get out an update talking about it today. We'll be getting out the altcoin video very soon here in the next couple of days. But the major thing I want to focus on and give an update on is what's the altcoin market looking like? It's a fair question. Well, even though ETH has pulled back here, if we take a look at the daily time frame, we've rebounded a lot of the losses from yesterday. In fact, quite sharply as well. If we take a look at the weekly, ETH is still holding on its line of support against Bitcoin. It's doing just fine. Now, certainly it's further away from its August 2020 highs, but it still looks like it's on a path to climb back up and rally even higher. Well, let's take a look at Litecoin here, right? Litecoin on the daily. Litecoin's been generally kind of going sideways here over the last couple of weeks, but here over the last few days since back here in December, it's keeping up with Bitcoin. It's going up higher. Let's take a look at that weekly chart. Is this a time where you're getting bearish on Litecoin? I'm not. I don't even know. I don't own any Litecoin at the moment. It's not that I don't like Litecoin as a crypto. I just don't own any right at the moment. You're going to tell me that chart looks bearish? You want to try to short that down here? I wouldn't do it in a million years. Take a look at Chainlink here, right? Again, another crypto here that pulled back. But what did it pull back on? It pulled back on its line of support that's been building up since September of 2019. Having a nice, solid correction from the all-time highs. And if we take a look at the date and price range tool here, dragging it down, we had an over 66.6% .6 correction a two-thirds correction here for Chainlink. These are the kind of levels we watch, guys. 50% declines, 60 to 66.6% .6 declines here for these types of altcoins against Bitcoin. This is really interesting stuff. And last but not least, XRP. What's happened with XRP? XRP broke out of the channel here, had a parabolic rally up here, and now is coming down to rest. And over the last few days, right, we can even turn to the daily. I have it on the three day chart. Over the last three days, it has been testing to make support on that previous resistance. All I can say, guys, is that above all, I'm very optimistic for Bitcoin, but I'm just as optimistic here for altcoins. This market is getting extremely exciting. The risk taking is going to start growing at a parabolic rate as people are starting to find that institutional capital is here to stay. It's getting in Bitcoin and it's going to lead, in this case, even if institutions aren't buying, uh, in this case, coins outside of Bitcoin, it really doesn't matter because there are a ton of people who own actual Bitcoin in the crypto space who are trading on spot exchange, who are actually as well trading on OTC and other methods. And in this case, liquidity circulates around. It's happened in all previous cycles, and it will happen in this one. Will it happen overnight? Eh, maybe not. But we're positioning ourselves on these kind of discounts. These are the points where absolute fear sets in, and that's when you buy. All right. Now, I'm not saying that Bitcoin can't continue to climb, guys. This has been phenomenal price action. If you just take a look at the hourly, even after a pretty substantial sell-off here, it's still holding up very nicely. You can just see, generally speaking, over the last couple of hours, a general trend line here or channel that we've been building where things are looking absolutely phenomenal. This is like fantastic, guys. Uh, so above all, let's just take a moment to reflect. We're living through a very exciting time. And above all, I really appreciate all the support you guys have shown. Now, a few couple things here. If you're looking to get your first Bitcoin, you can always do it through the Digifox app. We just launched Bitcoin through Digifox. So you can go ahead and purchase Bitcoin if you'd like, manage it in your Digifox portfolio. And outside of that as well, if you guys need some help navigating the market here, we've got our newsletter here on the channel where you guys are welcome to check that out as well. But putting that aside, above all, I hope you guys just liked the video. If you do, please drop a like, consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon, and leave a comment as to where you think Bitcoin and the broader crypto market is going in the next couple of days and weeks. I'm excited to hear from you guys and what you think. 
But above all, I said above all a lot. Wow. It's my new, my new crutch word, I guess, or my new crutch statement. <laughs> Guys, I love you all very much. Thank you for sticking with me all these years. It's been a wild, more than three, I guess around three and a half years now for the channel. And we're just getting started for this journey. Through bull markets and bear markets, I'll be here with you guys to live for these moments, the moments we can share together. All right, take care, everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.